Good morning. Welcome to today's Chick Quest adventure. We are so glad that you have joined us today to learn more about eggs and chickens and science. So these adventures, remember, are sponsored by Grow Next Gen and the Ohio Soybean Council in partnership with educationprojects.org. So today we are going to be mathematicians. Remember yesterday I told you that if you have an egg around, bring it to the table. Let's look over here at some of the tools we will use today as we measure eggs. Okay, everybody, I have brought an assortment of scientific tools to the table for us today to use. One of the things what we look at eggs is we say, hmm, I don't really see any difference. Maybe these eggs are a different color, but so what? Why is it important to use math as scientists? Scientists use math to help record observations that they see so that they can determine small differences in between items. Today, we are gonna specifically look at different eggs. Take a look at these eggs. Look at some of the tools that you see on the table. I will describe those tools to you in just a second, but what are some ways we could note any differences? First, I have a handy dandy chart here, as you guys can see. And in that chart, we are gonna record length, circumference, weight, and volume and some other observations if we think of them. When we're thinking about the length of an egg, which tool could we use to measure that? You're right, we are gonna use this tape measure here to record the length of an egg. We can even use this tape measure to record its circumference. The next measurement that we're talking about is the egg's weight. Why is that important? Eggs weigh different amounts because they have different mass. When you go to the store and you see eggs that are medium size or large or jumbo, that's based upon the egg's weight. So it's important to weigh each egg so we know how to sort them for our use. We are gonna use this spring scale today to measure the weight of each of these three eggs in front of you. The last thing that we're gonna to measure today is the egg's volume. And what that means is the amount of space that it takes up. So I brought a graduated cylinder today and I filled it with 200 milliliters of water. And we are gonna put an egg in there and watch how the egg takes up space in the graduated cylinder. What will happen is it'll make the water rise and I can record that difference and discover the egg's volume. Okay, are you ready to get started? Let's look at egg number one, this white egg. Remember, the first thing that I said we were going to measure was its length. To do that accurately, let's take our pencil and make a spot at the top of the egg where I can start my measurements and flip it over and make another notation at its bottom. How long do you think the length of this egg is? Let's make a prediction. In inches, I'm going to predict that this egg is two inches in length. Let's see if I'm right. Let's put my tape measure here at the top, right on that mark with my thumb. Oh my goodness, I was wrong. Look at that. This egg is three inches and three eighths. I'm gonna write that down or I'm gonna forget. So egg number one was three inches and an additional three eighths, so almost an additional half. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna flip this over and measure that same length in centimeters. Look at that, guys. This egg is just under eight and a half centimeters. I better write that down. So eight and another three, whoops, tenths of a centimeter. 
Now let me put this egg next to the brown egg. Do you think that the white egg or the brown egg has a longer length? Let's make a prediction. It, le it seems a little obvious to me, but on the camera, it looks like they're about the same size. So let's just say, is the white egg bigger or smaller in length than the brown egg? Do you have your prediction ready? Okay, let's test it. I'm going to again, carefully mark my top and bottom of the egg, and then I'm going to measure. I think the brown egg is smaller. And I'm right, the brown egg is only three inches in length. So I'm gonna write that down. And quickly, I'm gonna do egg number three. You make your prediction, is it smaller? So shorter in length from the white egg? I think it's the same size. Uh-oh, I was wrong. It's only three and two eighths of an inch. Okay, so now that I know that in size, the white egg has the longest length and then the green egg and then the brown egg, that helps me a little bit to think, hmm, maybe this chicken was bigger or smaller, who knows, but she definitely laid a bigger egg, huh? Let me think then in terms of circumference. And the circumference is if I take my egg and I wrap my tape measure around the middle, just like a belt to help keep your pants up. So I'm gonna put one mark here in the middle. And my prediction is that this circumference is longer than its length. Okay, so that would mean it would have to be longer than three inches and three eighths. Let's see. As I carefully put my tape measure on the mark, I'm going to wrap my tape measure all the way around until I can see again. And look at that, guys. Can you see? It's just under six inches. So it looks like it's five and five eighths of an inch in circumference. Again, I'm gonna write that down. And based upon my previous data that I've taken here, my prediction is that the green egg will have the second largest circumference and the brown egg then will be the shortest circumference. And if we have time, we're gonna come back and measure that. The next measurement that we can take today is weight. Now to do that, I have this really cool spring scale. Does everybody see? Let's weigh this white egg. First, I'm gonna take my egg and put it in a bag. Whoops, I hope I didn't crack it. And I'm gonna go ahead and suspend it from my spring scale. Let's tip this up just a little so you guys can see what happens. All right, it's important that the egg is off of the ground. Do you see? On this particular spring scale, we have measurements in grams and ounces. So the metric system and the system that we typically use here, the good old English. All right, now let me read it, it's important. Let me push the camera back down. It looks like this particular egg, guys, is about hmm, 74 grams. So I'm gonna write that down. And I am quickly going to weigh the brown egg. Remember, it was the smallest in length. Let's make a prediction together about the weight of this egg. If the white egg was 74 grams, how long, how much of a difference do you think this brown egg will be? Here we go. 
this brown egg is 62 grams. So that's quite a difference. All right, the last thing that we would like to do today is measure the amount of space or volume these eggs take up. Now remember, we went from the biggest egg in length to the in-between, the medium egg, and then the smallest egg, okay? So my prediction is that this egg will have the most volume and this egg will have the least volume. Let's see if I'm right. I'm gonna switch the camera so you can more easily see what I'm doing. All right, this is dangerous. Are you guys ready? Okay, we're gonna take the white egg and we're gonna tip our container and oh, carefully put it down in the water without spilling anything. And notice here on this camera that the volume has gone from 200 milliliters to about 253 milliliters. So let's write that down. So we had a displacement of 53 milliliters of water. So that means that this egg's volume is 53 milliliters. Isn't that cool? Let's take a look at some of our measurements. Let's think of reasons why scientists use measurements in their work. Remember, scientists are very careful about what they do. It's really important to track your data. Today, as mathematicians, you are using measurements to record differences in eggs. You can do this at home anytime. Grab some eggs from your refrigerator, Maybe ask your mom to get jumbo eggs from the store and large eggs from the store so that you can see some of the differences. Remember when I told you that the weight of the eggs determine the size of egg and how they're sorted. So let's look at our weight really quick. Today, we had eggs that weighed 74 grams and another set of eggs that weighed 62 grams. Remember that? An egg that falls between 62 is a large egg. So that means this brown egg is graded as a large egg in the grocery store. And did you know that we use large eggs in all of our recipes? So when you're doing some recipes with your mom and cooking at home, you're doing math. You're using some measurements as you decide how much of each ingredient you use and all recipes are based on the large size of an egg. Remember that white egg that we talked about that's here in the graduated cylinder? That was 74 grams. When I look down here, that means it's a jumbo egg. So if an egg is over 70 grams, it's considered jumbo. Whew, could you imagine being the chicken that had to lay that egg? Oh my goodness. Well, guess what guys? I am so excited that you are here with me today on Chick Quest Adventures. Just to review, what we learned today was how to measure the differences in eggs that you see. We measured the length, so from top to bottom. We measured the circumference, so around the middle. We measured its weight and its volume. And we used those measurements to be able to determine the differences in eggs. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about egg membranes and how things go in and out of an egg. Take care. Please go to grownextgen.org to see all of the great resources that we have with ChickQuest and other things. Have a fantastic day. Goodbye.